Time to learn a new language. Easy, right? All right, so how do you exactly learn a new programming language? Where do you start? Well, first, you should know how to code. If you know how to code in any language, you're already a step ahead. If you've never coded before ever, when you're thinking of a new programming language, you don't really know what a programming language is. You probably haven't heard of like variables or if statements or while loops or functions or data types or anything like that, then you're going to have to start at square one. I'd recommend following some course based curriculum, which we'll talk about in a second, but definitely following something that is very step by step, whether that's a YouTube video or something on LinkedIn learning or and maybe a Udemy course you find, something that is very step-by-step -step and is focusing probably less on projects themselves because projects can look really intimidating and there are a lot of different things going on. It's easy to get lost in the components of a project if you don't understand what most core programming applications have. So if all that didn't make sense, go find a course. 30 Days of Code on my channel is a great start or you could try something else up to you, but something that's literally like never coded before, that's where you're gonna wanna, any series that starts with that, you're gonna wanna check that out. Option two, you know how to code. You know what a variable is. You've made some variables in your lifetime. You've made some functions. You've made some programs. You've made maybe like a hangman game or you've made a tic-tac-toe type of game. You've made very basic applications. Well, on that tier, you, you're doing pretty good. You know the basics, you understand the theory a little bit more of computer science. And so you'll be able maybe to take on a project. And so you know how to make tic-tac-toe in Java, so let's go try it in JavaScript, or let's go try it in Python, or whatever language you wanna learn next. Notice that I'm saying very clear languages here. I'm not saying, um, how to learn language, Angular, because Angular is a framework, and so really when we're talking about programming languages here, we're talking about C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Swift, Objective-C. These are base level programming languages, and then on top of those, you have special functionality through libraries and frameworks that allow you to organize your code and have different functionality in different ways. But your core basis, your programming language, that's like your base zero, and then depending on which language you choose, you can build up with libraries and frameworks and understand how to take advantage of that language and how to really build your knowledge and skill set in that little silo, that little, yeah. So you know how to code, you know the basics. You, where do you even start? Well, you could follow a YouTube video that goes through like a project, that's an option. If you wanna get familiar a little bit with the language first before jumping into watching someone build a project or maybe you saw someone build a project through a YouTube video and it looked really intimidating or things didn't make sense, start with the syntax. So how do you create a variable? How do you create a function? How do you do an if statement? How do you do a while loop? And some languages might not have that directly, but looking at the basic components of the language and how to do hello world type things. And where are you gonna find that out? The documentation. So you'll go to the documentation, you'll say Java, documentation, Python, documentation. You'll Google that. And then you'll go in and you'll see, okay, and you'll literally just read that. Like that's, if you already know how to code, that should be pretty straightforward and like, okay, this is how you're going to create a variable. Maybe take notes on it. Maybe just kind of get a feel for the language. I would have like the documentation on one side and then maybe an online editor. Uh, what's it called? JDoodle. I would have J, if you Google JDoodle, you'll find it, but it's basically an online editor and compiler and thing where you can basically run code from any language very basic and so or very basic code from that language so you just like select your language and then you can write code in it but that'll help you get the feel of like how do i make things da, da, da. um how do i build like structures how do i build classes if there's classes and really getting a like familiarity with the syntax so that way later on you're not just stuck in this syntax land and 
you know, you don't want to get into building Java projects before you realize you have to put a semicolon at the end of everything. If you don't realize you need that semicolon, like, there's some problems. And so focus on maybe those things first. And then once you feel comfortable, once you feel like you kind of get it, then you can go on and try to build other projects. You could try to replicate projects you've already built in other languages. Again, watch videos of other people building projects and kind of break it down in your own mind and maybe try to build it in a different way. And then once you have that down, and these basic projects, uh, we talk about it in an episode of the Programmer Toolbox. Yeah, um, we talk about it. Uh, there's a couple episodes where we talk about um, projects you can get started with as a beginner programmer, but most of these are not gonna require libraries or frameworks. And we'll talk about those in a minute, but they're not gonna, they're gonna be very much like plain, vanilla. You, all you need is a way to input things, a way to output things, and a way to add things. Those are the types of problems we're talking about, or those are the types of programs we were talking about building. Once you have that down, now you know a little bit more, and you can take on something a little bit more challenging. For that, now you need to understand what others have created for that language. So for example, I say I learned Python. I get the basics of Python. I get how you do your if statements and other things and I get the indent, you gotta indent in Python. I understand those things. Now, maybe I'm interested in data science. I'll go check out like, what do I need to know about Python? And you, in researching Python, you'll soon learn that a lot of languages come with like a standard library. And essentially those are things that are like functions that are built into the language. And so these are like built in data types, built in, for example, Python has like absolute value built in. And Python also has built-in modules. And so there's like a math module, the date time module, um, lots of different modules that are helpful that you can import into your code. So understanding like what is available in the language I have. And then it's like, okay, those are all the things that are built in. What modules could I download from the internet or what like external functionality could I download from the internet to help me with my program? Okay, go look at that. Then Soon you'll learn a really popular library for Python is Pandas. And Pandas is built on NumPy, which is another library. And essentially these give you a lot of like data statistics stuff. So it allows you to view and manipulate your data. And even the matplotlib library allows you to plot and show like statistics of your data. So you'll learn like all of those things. And it's like, okay, I understand the language, but understanding the language isn't enough. You have to learn what else you can do with the language. And that can come from either a course based or a project based. So I would I would not recommend doing uh, one or the other. I would do both. So find YouTube videos, find someone going through the material. And then once you've seen that, you've seen how someone else has done it, go ahead, find something for you to do. Do it yourself. Something that I, this isn't really a language, but something I've been really trying to get into is machine learning. Everyone is trying to get into machine learning. And Amazon recently released like their training certification videos online and they're so, so good. I've tried to learn machine learning in the past and I've gotten like the basis of it, like a theory version of it, but in like the AWS stuff, they literally go through how you would use Amazon Web Services, AWS, um, how you'd use um, Amazon Web Services to train machine learning models and how do you load data, how do you split between the you know test sets and training sets, how do you train your machine learning model, how do you predict and infer like what if I'm giving a new foreign un unknown piece of data, like what will the output be, things like that. And I've only heard of it a lot in theory and it's hard to find, I think, tutorials where people actually walk through it. And Amazon does that. And so now like I'm, I'm going through that and then my next step will be looking at Craggle. I think it's called Craggle where they basically just post a bunch of different like machine learning problems and you have to come up with a model that gives the least amount of error. And so if you like, all right, brief side note here. Machine learning based on mathematics and the most, the, there are lots of different types. I'm just gonna be talking about classification right now, but if you think of, you know, does this picture have a dog in it? Yes or no? A machine learning model and like neural network, yes, but 
you should be able to create a model or some kind of function, some kind of algorithm that has parameters and has all this jumbled stuff in it, should be able to determine if a given photo has a dog in it or not once it is given a bunch of photos with dogs in it and images with dogs not there. That data could be either labeled, so like saying, hey, this has a dog, this doesn't, or it can just be a bunch of images. Some of them have dogs, some of them don't, and there's no labels, there's no like thing that says this one has a dog, this one doesn't. And you want to try to create the best model that most accurately predicts if there's a dog in the photo or not. So that's like, and you would have to create that algorithm or you use someone else's algorithm and kind of tune it a little bit to fit your needs. Overall, out of all the resources out there, I think for projects, look at YouTube, Google something you want to build, or, well, YouTube something you want to build, and then Google it. And even whether it's on YouTube through a video or if it's just ideas from your Stack Overflow or other websites, those are great ways to get ideas for projects. And then for course-based, I think you can get really ripped off on Udemy, so I'd be careful on that one, so that's U-D-E-M-Y. I have a course on there, but it's not a ripoff. Um, it's more for very, very beginners, so do you even like computer science? Um, but Udemy, you gotta be careful. You could get, you know, you could buy a course and it sucks. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's also Code Academy, and I love Code Academy. They're great, but I think it can be really hard to co learn how to code on Code Academy because the way you code is through their interface, and so you go to their website and they have a window where you input code. I think if you've never coded before, it can seem pretty detached, and you're not doing it like on your machine, you're not doing it on your like environment, and it doesn't feel like it's your, your baby, which is like, yes. and because of that i think it, yeah it just feels detached it doesn't feel like something you built it feels like you happen to put in the two keys that made it work and it doesn't click i think but if you've already know how to code you could probably figure out how to get it on your computer i think you could use code academy for the concept like that's like angular one no one uses angular one anymore but i used code academy to learn angular one and conceptual wise it was amazing and then also after learning the concepts like at the very end they did like i did pro for like i did like the free trial for a month but they give you at the very end show you how to put it on your own computer but i think you could probably find an article that shows you how to install everything appropriately and or you could just figure it out but you wouldn't have that intuition and you wouldn't have that like just mindset of like okay i could probably figure out how this works on my computer if you've never had to do that before it would seem just so foreign and so out there I think it'd be hard to grasp. LinkedIn Learning, love them. Great option for course-based material. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a great way to start learning something and then you need to go and take it on your own and actually build something. You're never gonna learn the whole concept if you just do the course base or if you just do the project. The project, you'll know how to make one project in the code. If you do just the project, you'll know how to make tic-tac-toe and Python and that is it. You won't know how to make a different project. And same thing with the course base, you'll understand the concepts but you won't be able to build anything. So you have to combine the two in order to learn the language and really not just the language, but the whole environment that surrounds that language and like the problems you're trying to solve. The language is just the first step. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and happy coding.